Prohibition, the noble experiment in American history, the roots of Prohibition in the United States, can be traced back to the early 19th century when the temperance movement began to gain momentum. This story will explore the origins of this movement, its key players, and the societal conditions that fueled its rise. The temperance movement emerged in response to the widespread consumption of alcohol in early American society. During the late 18th and early 19th centuries, alcohol consumption was rampant, with whiskey and other spirits being an integral part of daily life. It was not uncommon for men, women, and even children to partake in drinking, leading to widespread alcoholism and its associated social problems. Reformers, many of whom were influenced by religious and moral convictions, saw the elimination of alcohol as essential to improving society. One of the earliest and most influential temperance organizations was the American Temperance Society ATS. Founded in 1826, the ATS advocated for complete abstinence from alcohol and quickly garnered a large following. Prominent figures in the temperance movement included Lyman Beecher, a Presbyterian minister whose sermons and writings fervently denounced alcohol, and Francis Willard, a leader of the Women's Christian Temperance Union WCTU. The WCTU, established in 1874, became one of the most powerful forces in the temperance crusade, emphasizing the protection of the home and family as a central tenet of their mission. The movement also saw the participation of more radical elements, such as Carrie Nation, who became famous for her direct action tactics, including the use of a hatchet to destroy saloons. Nation's dramatic and confrontational style brought significant attention to the cause and highlighted the deep societal divisions over the issue of alcohol. The temperance movement's influence extended beyond individual activists and organizations. It permeated various aspects of American society, including education and politics. Temperance education programs were implemented in schools, and many states passed local temperance laws, setting the stage for a broader national movement. As the 19th century progressed, the temperance movement increasingly intertwined with other social reform efforts, such as women's suffrage and anti-slavery campaigns. This convergence of causes helped to solidify the temperance movement's place in American social and political life, paving the way for the eventual push for nationwide prohibition. The culmination of the temperance movement's efforts came with the establishment of the Anti-Saloon League ASL 1893. The ASL was highly organized and politically savvy, focusing on lobbying for legislative change, both the state and federal levels, under the leadership of Wayne Wheeler. The ASL employed effective strategies to influence public opinion and sway politicians ultimately leading to the ratification of the 18th Amendment. The journey from the early temperance movement to the enactment of prohibition was marked by perseverance, moral fervor, and a belief in the possibility of societal improvement through the elimination of alcohol. The road to the 18th Amendment was long and fraught with political maneuvering, social advocacy, and grassroots organizing. In the early 20th century, the temperance movement now a well-established force in American society, intensified its efforts to achieve national prohibition. The Anti-Saloon League ASL emerged as the leading organization in this fight, employing a focused and strategic approach to lobbying for prohibition. The ASL's success was largely due to its ability to mobilize public support and influence lawmakers through persistent advocacy and effective use of propaganda. One of the ASLS most significant achievements was its ability to align itself with other social reform movements, creating a broad coalition of support for prohibition. The Progressive Era, a period marked by widespread social activism and political reform, provided fertile ground for the ASLS efforts. Progressive reformers, concerned with issues such as corruption, poverty and public health, saw prohibition as a means to address these societal ills. The political landscape of the time also played a crucial role in the passage of the 18th Amendment. 
The United States was undergoing significant demographic changes, with increased urbanization and immigration. Many native-born Americans, particularly those in rural areas, viewed these changes with suspicion and saw alcohol as a symbol of the social problems they associated with urbanization and immigrant communities. This nativist sentiment further fueled the push for prohibition. World War I provided an additional boost to the prohibition cause. The war effort emphasized the need for national unity and sacrifice, and prohibitionists capitalized on this sentiment by framing alcohol consumption as unpatriotic. They argued that grains used for brewing beer and distilling spirits were better utilized for feeding soldiers and civilians. The wartime context also allowed prohibitionists to link alcohol with Germany, the primary enemy, as many American breweries were owned by German immigrants. The 18th Amendment, which called for the complete prohibition of the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcoholic beverages, was passed by Congress on December 18, 1917. It was subsequently ratified by the required number of states on January 16, 1919, and took effect on January 17, 1920. The Volstead Act, enacted on October 28, 1919, provided the legal framework for enforcing the amendment. The passage of the 18th Amendment represented a significant victory for the temperance movement and marked the beginning of a new era in American history. However, it also set the stage for the complex and often contentious period that would follow as the nation grappled with the challenges of enforcing prohibition and dealing with its unintended consequences. The implementation of prohibition presented numerous challenges for law enforcement agencies as the nationwide ban on alcohol proved difficult to enforce. One of the primary challenges of enforcing prohibition was the sheer scale of the task. The United States, with its vast geography and extensive coastline, provided ample opportunities for illegal alcohol production and smuggling. Bootleggers and rum runners took advantage of these opportunities, creating a thriving black market for alcoholic beverages. The federal government established the Prohibition Bureau within the Department of the Treasury to oversee enforcement efforts. However, the Bureau was severely underfunded and understaffed, with only a few thousand agents tasked with enforcing the law across the entire country. This lack of resources made it nearly impossible to effectively combat the widespread illegal activity. Corruption within law enforcement agencies further hampered enforcement efforts. Many police officers, prohibition agents and government officials were susceptible to bribery, turning a blind eye to illegal activities in exchange for financial gain. This corruption extended to the highest levels of government, undermining the credibility of prohibition enforcement. The general public's resistance to prohibition also posed a significant challenge. Many Americans, particularly in urban areas, were unwilling to give up their social and cultural traditions involving alcohol. Speakeasies, or secret bars, proliferated in cities, offering potrons a place to drink and socialize away from the prying eyes of the law. These establishments often operated with the tacit approval of local authorities, who either participated in or profited from the illegal trade. The ingenuity of those involved in the illegal alcohol trade further complicated enforcement efforts. Bootleggers employed various methods to produce, transport, and distribute alcohol without detection. They used false bottoms in trucks, underground tunnels, and even innovative communication systems to evade capture. Rum runners, who smuggled alcohol by sea, used fast boats and navigated complex routes to avoid the Coast Guard. Despite these challenges, the federal government made concerted efforts to enforce prohibition. High-profile raids and arrests were conducted to demonstrate the government's commitment to upholding the law. Some notorious bootleggers and crime figures, such as Al Capone, were eventually brought to justice, but these successes were often overshadowed by the widespread and persistent illegal activity. The difficulty of enforcing prohibition highlighted the limitations of the law and contributed to growing public disillusionment with the policy. As the years passed, the challenges of enforcement became increasingly apparent, 
setting the stage for the eventual repeal of prohibition. The prohibition era saw the emergence of speakeasies and bootleggers as central figures in the illegal alcohol trade. Speakeasies, also known as blind pigs or blind tigers, were secret bars that operated illegally during prohibition. These establishments became cultural hotspots, offering potrons a place to drink, dance, and socialize away from the watchful eyes of law enforcement. Speakeasies were often hidden behind unassuming storefronts or in basements, with access granted only to those who knew the secret password or had the right connections. The rise of speakeasies was fueled by the public's desire to continue socializing and consuming alcohol, despite the legal restrictions. These venues quickly became popular, with many offering live music, dancing, and other forms of entertainment. The jazz music scene, in particular, thrived in speakeasies, contributing to the cultural vibrancy of the Roaring Twenties. Bootleggers were the individuals and groups responsible for producing, transporting, and distributing illegal alcohol to speakeasies and private consumers. The term bootlegger originated from the practice of concealing flasks of alcohol in boots, but it came to encompass a wide range of illicit activities related to the alcohol trade. The bootlegging industry attracted a diverse array of participants, from small-scale moonshiners in rural areas to organized crime syndicates in major cities. These criminals saw prohibition as a lucrative business opportunity, capitalizing on the high demand for alcohol and the willingness of consumers to pay a premium for it. One of the most notorious figures in the bootlegging world was Al Capone, a gangster who built a vast criminal empire based on the illegal alcohol trade in Chicago. Capone's operations were highly organized and efficient, involving the production, transportation, and distribution of alcohol on a massive scale. His wealth and power grew exponentially, making him one of the most infamous criminals of the era. The bootlegging industry was not without its dangers. Violent turf wars erupted between rival gangs competing for control of the lucrative market. These conflicts often resulted in brutal murders and widespread corruption, further highlighting the lawlessness that characterized the Prohibition era. Despite the risks, many Americans viewed bootleggers and speakeasy operators as folk heroes who defied an unjust law. The widespread defiance of prohibition laws contributed to a cultural shift, with many people questioning the validity and effectiveness of the policy. The rise of speakeasies and bootleggers had a profound impact on American society. It exposed the limitations of prohibition enforcement, highlighted the resilience and ingenuity of those who opposed the law, and contributed to the cultural vibrancy of the Roaring Twenties. The Prohibition era provided fertile ground for the growth of organized crime, with the Mafia emerging as a powerful and influential force in the illegal alcohol trade. The Mafia, originally an Italian-American criminal organization, capitalized on the opportunities presented by Prohibition to expand its operations and increase its influence. The high demand for illegal alcohol created a lucrative black market, and the Mafia's existing networks and expertise in illicit activities made it well positioned to dominate the trade. Organized crime syndicates, including the Mafia, established complex and efficient operations to produce, transport, and distribute illegal alcohol. These organizations often operated with a high degree of sophistication, employing bribery, violence, and corruption to protect their interests and evade law enforcement. One of the most notorious Mafia figures of the Prohibition era was Charles Lucky Luciano, who played a significant role in the development of organized crime in the United States. Luciano's influence extended beyond the illegal alcohol trade as he helped to establish the modern American Mafia and its structure of organized criminal families. The activities of organized crime syndicates during Prohibition were not limited to the alcohol trade. These groups also engaged in other illegal enterprises, such as gambling, prostitution, and drug trafficking. The wealth and power generated from these activities allowed organized crime to infiltrate legitimate businesses and corrupt public officials, 
further entrenching their influence in American society. The violence associated with organized crime during Prohibition was a significant issue. Rival gangs frequently engaged in bloody conflicts over territory and market control, leading to numerous murders and acts of brutality. High-profile incidents, such as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, where seven members of Chicago's North Side Gang were executed by Al Capone's men, shocked the nation and underscored the lawlessness of the era. The pervasive corruption linked to organized crime also had a profound impact on American politics and law enforcement. Many public officials, including police officers, judges, and politicians, were complicit in the illegal activities, accepting bribes in exchange for turning a blind eye to the crimes. This corruption undermined public trust in government institutions and highlighted the challenges of enforcing prohibition. Despite the negative aspects of organized crime, some Americans viewed figures like Al Capone and Lucky Luciano as anti-heroes who defied an unpopular law. The romanticized image of the gangster as a rebel against authority contributed to the cultural allure of the prohibition era. The legacy of organized crime during Prohibition is complex and far-reaching. The era established the foundations for modern organized crime in the United States, with the Mafia continuing to wield significant influence in the decades that followed. The lessons learned from Prohibition, particularly regarding the unintended consequences of restrictive legislation, continue to resonate in contemporary discussions about crime and public policy. Prohibition had a profound cultural impact on American society, influencing everything from music and literature to fashion and social norms. One of the most notable cultural phenomena of the Prohibition era was the rise of jazz music. Jazz, with its roots in African-American communities, became the soundtrack of the Roaring Twenties, reflecting the year's spirit of rebellion and innovation. Speakeasies and nightclubs often featured live jazz performances, making the music synonymous with the clandestine nightlife of Prohibition. The jazz scene also contributed to the cultural integration of African-American artists, who gained significant popularity and influence during this period. Musicians like Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington and Bessie Smith became household names, breaking racial barriers and leaving a lasting legacy are American music. The fashion of the Prohibition era also underwent significant changes, reflecting the shifting social norms and attitudes of the time. The flapper, a symbol of the liberated woman, emerged as an iconic figure of the 1920s. Flappers embraced new styles that were seen as bold and unconventional, such as shorter skirts, bobbed hair and more relaxed silhouettes. This fashion revolution was emblematic of the broader cultural shift towards greater freedom and individuality. Literature and film of the Prohibition era also captured the complexities and contradictions of the time. Writers like F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway explored themes of excess, disillusionment and the pursuit of pleasure in their works. Fitzgerald's novel The Great Gatsby is particularly notable for its portrayal of the decadence and moral ambiguity of the jazz age, with the character Jay Gatsby epitomizing the era's glamorous, yet ultimately hollow pursuit of wealth and status. The film industry, too, reflected the cultural impact of prohibition. The rise of Hollywood during the 1920s saw the production of numerous films that depicted the glamour and intrigue of the prohibition era. Gangster films, in particular, became popular, with characters based on real-life figures, like Al Capone capturing the public's imagination. Prohibition also influenced social behavior and attitudes towards alcohol. The widespread defiance of prohibition laws led to a normalization of illegal drinking and a shift in public perception of alcohol consumption. The speakeasy culture, with its emphasis on secrecy and exclusivity, contributed to a sense of camaraderie and rebellion among those who frequented these establishments. The cultural impact of prohibition extended beyond the end of the era, leaving a lasting imprint on American society. The 1920s are often remembered as a time of social upheaval, cultural innovation, 
and the break from traditional norms. Prohibition played a central role in shaping this dynamic period, influencing everything from music and fashion to literature and film. Women played a crucial role in the prohibition movement, both as advocates for the policy and as participants in the cultural changes it spurred. The temperance movement, which laid the groundwork for prohibition, was significantly shaped by women's activism. Organizations like the Women's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU, founded in 1874, were at the forefront of the fight against alcohol. The WCTU, led by figures such as Francis Willard, framed the battle against alcohol as a moral crusade to protect the home and family. Women's involvement in the temperance movement was often driven by personal experiences with alcoholism and its devastating effects on families. The women's suffrage movement also intersected with the temperance cause. Many suffragists saw prohibition as a means to address broader social issues, including domestic violence and poverty, which were often linked to alcohol abuse. The passage of the 19th Amendment in 1920, granting women the right to vote, bolstered the prohibition movement, as many newly enfranchised women supported the 18th Amendment. During the prohibition era, women continued to play significant roles, both in support of and in opposition to the policy. Some women, particularly in rural and religious communities, remained staunch supporters of prohibition, believing it would lead to a more moral and orderly society. These women often participated in enforcement efforts, joining groups like the Women's Organization for National Prohibition Reform, WONPR, which advocated for stricter enforcement of prohibition laws. Conversely, many women in urban areas embraced the social freedoms that prohibition inadvertently fostered. The rise of the flapper culture, characterized by a more liberated and independent lifestyle, was emblematic of the broader social changes occurring during the 1920s. Flappers challenged traditional gender roles, embracing new fashions, behaviours and attitudes. They frequented speakeasies, smoked cigarettes and danced to jazz music, defying societal expectations and norms. The experiences of women during Prohibition were diverse and complex. While some women found new opportunities for social and cultural expression, others faced significant challenges. The illegal nature of the alcohol trade led to increased violence and crime, which disproportionately affected women and families. Additionally, the economic hardships of the Great Depression compounded the difficulties faced by many women, particularly those in marginalized communities. Prohibition also had a lasting impact on women's rights and social roles. The activism and organizational skills developed during the temperance and suffrage movements laid the foundation for a future women's rights campaigns. The experiences of women during Prohibition highlighted the need for broader social and political reforms, contributing to the ongoing struggle for gender equality. The economic impact of Prohibition was multifaceted, affecting various sectors of the economy in both positive and negative ways. One of the most immediate and significant economic effects of Prohibition was the loss of tax revenue from the alcohol industry. Prior to Prohibition, alcohol taxes were a substantial source of income for both federal and state governments. The sudden elimination of this revenue stream created significant financial challenges, particularly during the early years of the Great Depression, when government resources were already strained. The closure of breweries, distilleries and saloons led to widespread job losses and the decline of related industries, such as glass manufacturing, barrel making and transportation. The ripple effects of these closures were felt throughout the economy as businesses that supplied goods and services to the alcohol industry also suffered. However, prohibition also created new economic opportunities, particularly in the illegal alcohol trade. Bootleggers, speakeasy operators and organized crime syndicates generated significant profits from the production and distribution of illegal alcohol. This underground economy flourished with some individuals and groups amassing considerable wealth and power. 
the enforcement of prohibition also created jobs and economic activity. The federal government allocated resources to the Prohibition Bureau and other law enforcement agencies tasked with upholding the law. This included hiring prohibition agents, funding operations to combat illegal activities and building infrastructure to support enforcement efforts. However, the costs of enforcement often outweighed the benefits, contributing to the economic strain on government budgets. The economic impact of prohibition extended beyond the alcohol industry. The loss of jobs and tax revenue contributed to broader economic instability, particularly in urban areas where the alcohol industry had been a significant part of the local economy. The Great Depression, which began in 1929, exacerbated these issues as the nation struggled with widespread unemployment and financial hardship. Despite the economic challenges, some sectors experienced growth during Prohibition. The entertainment industry, including jazz clubs, theatres and dance halls, thrived as people sought alternative forms of recreation and socialization. The fashion industry also benefited, with the rise of new styles and trends associated with the flapper culture. The eventual repeal of Prohibition, with the ratification of the 21st Amendment in 1933, had a significant economic impact. The return of legal alcohol sales provided a much-needed boost to the economy, generating jobs, tax revenue and business opportunities. The revival of the alcohol industry helped to alleviate some of the economic hardships of the Great Depression, contributing to the nation's recovery. The media and literature of the Prohibition era played a crucial role in shaping public perception and discourse about the policy. Newspapers and magazines were at the forefront of the public debate about Prohibition. Many publications took strong stances on the issue, either supporting or opposing the policy. The media's coverage of Prohibition-related events, such as high-profile raids, arrests and court cases, helped to shape public opinion and keep the issue in the national spotlight. Prominent journalists and writers of the time used their platforms to critique or defend Prohibition. Figures like H. L. Mencken, a vocal critic of Prohibition, wrote scathing articles that highlighted the policy's failures and unintended consequences. Mencken's sharp wit and incisive commentary resonated with many Americans who were disillusioned with Prohibition. Literature also played a significant role reflecting and shaping the cultural attitudes of the Prohibition era. Novels such as F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby and Sinclair Lewis's Babbitt explored themes of excess, moral ambiguity and social change, capturing the spirit of the jazz age and the complexities of life during Prohibition. These works provided a literary lens through which readers could examine the social and cultural impacts of Prohibition. The film industry, which was rapidly growing during the 1920s, also contributed to the cultural discourse on Prohibition. Hollywood produced numerous films that depicted the glamour and danger of the Prohibition era, including gangster films that romanticised the lives of bootleggers and criminals. These films, while often sensationalised, provided a window into the cultural fascination with the era's illicit activities, radio, a relatively new medium at the time, also played a role in shaping public opinion. Radio broadcasts brought news and entertainment directly into people's homes, influencing their views on prohibition and other contemporary issues. The ability of radio to reach a wide audience made it a powerful tool for both supporters and opponents of prohibition. The role of media and literature in the prohibition era was multifaceted, reflecting the complexities and contradictions of the time. These cultural forms not only documented the events and attitudes of the era, but also influenced how people understood and responded to prohibition. The interplay between media, literature and public opinion helped to shape the national conversation and ultimately contributed to the policy's eventual repeal. The eventual repeal of prohibition marked a significant turning point in American history. The growing public disillusionment with prohibition played a crucial role in its repeal. 
the widespread defiance of prohibition laws, the rise of organized crime, and the economic challenges of the Great Depression all contributed to a shift in public opinion. By the early 1930s, many Americans had come to view prohibition as a failed experiment that caused more harm than good. The political landscape also shifted in favor of repeal. The election of Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1932 signaled a change in national priorities. Roosevelt, who campaigned on a platform that included the repeal of prohibition, argued that legalizing alcohol would create jobs and generate much-needed tax revenue during the economic crisis. The process of repealing prohibition began with the passage of the Cullen Harrison Act in March 1933, which allowed the sale of beer and wine with low alcohol content. This act was a precursor to the 21st Amendment, which was ratified on December 5, 1933, officially ending prohibition. The immediate aftermath of prohibition's repeals of the resurgence of the legal alcohol industry. Breweries, distilleries, and bars reopened, providing a boost to the economy and creating jobs. The return of alcohol tax revenue also provided a significant financial benefit to the government. The legacy of prohibition is complex and multifaceted. While it failed to achieve its primary goal of eliminating alcohol consumption, prohibition had lasting impacts on American society and policy. The era highlighted the limitations of restrictive legislation and the unintended consequences of attempting to legislate morality. Prohibition also had a lasting impact on law enforcement and organized crime. The rise of powerful crime syndicates during Prohibition established the foundations for modern organized crime of the United States. The experience of enforcing Prohibition laws also led to changes in law enforcement practices and the development of federal agencies like the FBI. The cultural legacy of Prohibition is evident in the continued fascination with the era, as reflected in literature, film, and popular culture. The romanticized image of the Roaring Twenties, with its jazz music, speakeasies, and gangsters, continues to capture the public imagination. The lessons learned from Prohibition have influenced contemporary debates on drug policy, alcohol regulation, and other social issues. The recognition that prohibitionist policies can have significant unintended consequences has shaped modern approaches to regulation and enforcement. The prohibition era provided valuable lessons for policymakers, law enforcement, and society at large. One of the most significant lessons from prohibition is the recognition of the limitations of restrictive legislation. Prohibition aimed to eliminate alcohol consumption through a nationwide ban but the widespread defiance of the law demonstrated the challenges of enforcing such sweeping measures. The failure to curb alcohol consumption and the rise of illegal activities underscored the difficulties of legislating personal behavior and moral choices. Another crucial lesson from prohibition is the understanding of unintended consequences. While prohibition sought to promote public health and morality, it inadvertently led to a host of negative outcomes including the proliferation of organized crime, corruption, and violence. These unintended consequences highlighted the importance of considering the broader impacts of policy decisions and the potential for well-intentioned laws to produce adverse effects. Prohibition also illustrated the importance of public support and compliance in the success of regulatory policies. The lack of widespread public support for prohibition, particularly in urban areas, contributed to the difficulty of enforcing the law. This experience emphasized the need for policymakers to build consensus and engage with the public when implementing regulations that affect personal behavior and social norms. The era also provided valuable insights into the relationship between regulation and economic activity. The significant economic impact of prohibition including the loss of tax revenue and job losses in the legal alcohol industry, underscored the need for careful consideration of economic factors in policy decisions. The revival of the alcohol industry following the repeal of prohibition 
demonstrated the potential for regulatory changes to stimulate economic growth and job creation. The lessons from prohibition have had a lasting influence on contemporary approaches to regulation and enforcement. In the realm of drug policy, for example, the recognition of the limitations and unintended consequences of prohibitionist approaches has led to more nuanced strategies that focus on harm reduction, public health and decriminalization. The movement to legalize and regulate cannabis in many states is a direct reflection of the lessons learned from prohibition, emphasizing regulation and taxation over outright bans. Similarly, the experience of prohibition has informed modern approaches to alcohol regulation. Rather than attempting to ban alcohol outright, contemporary policies focus on regulating its sale and consumption, promoting responsible drinking, and addressing issues such as drunk driving and underage drinking through targeted interventions. Prohibition had a profound impact on the social dynamics of American society, influencing everything from family life and social interactions to class and racial relations. Family life was significantly affected by prohibition, as the policy aimed to address issues related to alcohol abuse, such as domestic violence and financial instability. For some families, the reduction in legal alcohol availability to improved household conditions and reduced instances of alcohol-related harm. However, for many others, the illegal alcohol trade introduced new challenges, including increased exposure to crime and violence. Social interactions and leisure activities also underwent significant changes during prohibition. The closure of legal saloons and bars led to the rise of speakeasies and private clubs, where people continued to socialize and consume alcohol. These clandestine venues often fostered a sense of exclusivity and rebellion, attracting a diverse clientele and contributing to the vibrant social scene of the Roaring Twenties. Prohibition also had a significant impact on class relations. The policy was often supported by rural and middle-class Americans who viewed alcohol consumption as a vice associated with urban, working-class and immigrant communities. This cultural divide was exacerbated by prohibition, as the law was seen as an attempt to impose middle-class values on the broader population. The resistance to prohibition in urban areas and among immigrant communities highlighted the cultural and class tensions of the era. Racial relations were also influenced by prohibition. African-American communities, which had already faced significant discrimination and segregation, experienced both positive and negative effects. On one hand, the jazz music scene, which thrived in speakeasies and nightclubs, provided new opportunities for African-American artists to gain recognition and influence. On the other hand, the illegal nature of the alcohol trade often exposed African-American communities to increased police scrutiny and violence. The involvement of women in the temperance and suffrage movements highlighted the changing roles and expectations of women in society. The rise of the flapper culture during the Prohibition era further challenged traditional gender norms, promoting greater social and cultural freedoms for women. The social dynamics of Prohibition were complex and multifaceted, reflecting the broader cultural shifts and tensions of the time. Prohibition had far-reaching political implications, influencing everything from local governance to national politics. At the local level, prohibition significantly affected governance and law enforcement. The challenges of enforcing prohibition laws led to increased responsibilities for local police departments and municipal governments. The widespread corruption associated with the illegal alcohol trade undermined public trust in local authorities and exposed the limitations of local governance in addressing widespread illegal activities. The political impact of prohibition was also evident at the state level. States varied in their approaches to enforcing prohibition, with some implementing stricter measures and others adopting more lenient policies. This variation in enforcement created inconsistencies and highlighted the complexities of implementing federal policies across diverse state contexts. At the national level, 
prohibition had a significant impact on political discourse and party dynamics. The policy was a major point of contention between political parties, with Republicans generally supporting prohibition and Democrats more likely to oppose it. This division was reflected in the political campaigns and platforms of the time, influencing voter behavior and election outcomes. The political landscape shifted significantly with the election of Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1932. Roosevelt's campaign, which included a promise to repeal prohibition, resonated with many Americans who were disillusioned with the policy and its consequences. The Democratic Party's support for repeal helped to consolidate its political base and contributed to Roosevelt's landslide victory. Prohibition also had a lasting impact on government institutions and law enforcement practices. The challenges of enforcing prohibition led to the creation and expansion of federal agencies, such as the Prohibition Bureau and the FBI. These agencies developed new techniques and strategies for combating illegal activities, many of which continued to be used in subsequent decades. The experience of prohibition also influenced contemporary debates on federalism and the balance of power between state and federal governments. The difficulties of enforcing a nationwide ban on alcohol highlighted the challenges of implementing uniform policies across diverse state contexts and reinforced the importance of state autonomy in certain policy areas. Prohibition was enacted with the intent of improving public health by reducing alcohol consumption and its associated harms. One of the primary public health goals of prohibition was to reduce alcohol consumption and its negative effects on health. In the early years of prohibition, there were some indications that alcohol consumption declined and certain alcohol-related health issues, such as liver cirrhosis, initially decreased. However, these benefits were short-lived as the illegal alcohol trade quickly filled the gap left by the legal market. The quality and safety of alcohol produced and sold illegally during Prohibition were major public health concerns. Bootleggers often produced alcohol in unsanitary conditions, using dangerous methods that resulted in contaminated and toxic products. The consumption of such products led to numerous cases of poisoning, blindness and even death. The lack of regulation and quality control in the illegal alcohol market undermined the public health benefits that Prohibition aimed to achieve. Prohibition also had indirect public health impacts, particularly related to the increase in violence and crime associated with the illegal alcohol trade. The rise of organized crime and gang violence during Prohibition contributed to a broader sense of insecurity and had significant public health implications including increased rates of injury and trauma. The enforcement of prohibition also had public health consequences. The focus on criminalizing alcohol consumption and distribution diverted resources and attention away from other public health initiatives. This emphasis on enforcement over education and treatment limited the effectiveness of public health efforts to address alcohol abuse and its related harms. Despite these challenges, prohibition did lead to some positive public health outcomes. The increased awareness of the negative effects of alcohol consumption and the promotion of temperance ideals contributed to a cultural shift towards more moderate drinking behaviours in some segments of society. Additionally, the experience of prohibition highlighted the importance of public health education and the need for comprehensive approaches to addressing substance abuse. The lessons learned from the public health impacts of prohibition have informed contemporary public health policy. Modern approaches to alcohol regulation emphasize harm reduction, education, and treatment over criminalization. Public health campaigns focus on promoting responsible drinking, preventing underage drinking, and providing support for individuals with alcohol use disorders. The Prohibition era remains a significant and complex period in American history, offering valuable insights and lessons for a contemporary society. Prohibition's legacy is multifaceted, encompassing its cultural, social, political, economic and public health impacts. The era's influence can be seen in contemporary debates on drug policy, 
alcohol regulation and broader issues of personal freedom and government intervention. The lessons learned from prohibition continue to inform modern approaches to regulation and enforcement, emphasizing the importance of balancing public health and safety with individual rights and economic considerations. One of the enduring legacies of prohibition is the recognition of the complexities and challenges of legislating personal behavior and morality. The widespread defiance of prohibition laws and the rise of illegal activities highlighted the limitations of restrictive legislation and the potential for unintended consequences. This experience has informed contemporary approaches to policy, emphasizing the importance of public support, education, and harm reduction. The cultural legacy of prohibition is also significant, with the era continuing to capture the public imagination through literature, film, and popular culture. The romanticized image of the Roaring Twenties, with its jazz music, speakeasies, and gangsters, reflects the enduring fascination with this transformative period and its impact on American society. Looking to the future, the lessons of prohibition can inform ongoing debates and policy decisions related to substance use and regulation. As society grapples with issues such as drug legalization, alcohol regulation, and public health, the experience of prohibition offers valuable insights into the complexities of these challenges and the importance of comprehensive and balanced approaches. Future research on prohibition can continue to shed light on its multifaceted impacts and provide a deeper understanding of this pivotal period in American history. By examining the diverse experiences and perspectives of those who live through prohibition, scholars can contribute to a more nuanced and comprehensive understanding of its legacy. Thanks for watching.